Welcome to Hope Today. You know, God is a faithful God and He will be faithful to you today. Trust Him at all times. He is always faithful. I'm Tom Hollis. I am here with Amy Schaefer. Amy, we have a guest with an amazing story today. Yes, and if you live anywhere in Western Pennsylvania, you felt an incredible storm last night. <laughs> Today, we're actually going to be talking about heaven stormed. And after clinically dying in a hospital for nearly 30 minutes, Randy Kay experienced a life altering firsthand encounter with Jesus, where he received crucial end times revelation. In his new book, you will fly, find clarity and urgency for these end times. So we're looking forward to having Randy Kay talking about Heaven stormed, a heavenly encounter reveals your assignment, Tom, in the end time outpouring and the tribulation. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot there. There's a uh, lot there. And Randy's always, I mean, he's got an amazing story, but he's always got uh, great things to share as well. And I understand you were with uh, someone else yesterday. Yeah, what? okay, you're not going to believe this, but yesterday I was with a group of pastors in Houston at Lakewood Church. We were with Joel and Victoria Osteen and Dr. Phil McGraw, of all people. <laughs> and we all got to pray for him. He is launching a new network called Merritt Street Media, uh, where they're just going to try to do pure journalism. Like, here's what happened uh, instead of, you know, extreme rights or extreme left viewpoints and really bringing faith and family yeah. and prayer to a, a network. So it's exciting that, that what is God good. is doing. That's great. And yeah, then Joel awesome. anointed every single one of us pastors. There was a special, special time. That sounds like a special time. It'd be good to look forward to that. And yeah. you were falling all over the place yesterday. <laughs> yesterday I was doing a project. I was at home and I was putting in a new kitchen door and I was carrying it and it fell over. It. <laughs> I had the weight the kind of the wrong way and I, it started going over oh. and I tried to hold myself and it went over. And I went right on top of it. So I feel like uh, I got hit with a baseball bat in my uh, uh, ribs here. Tom, so thank yeah. God you survived. But guess what? The door is installed. The door is in. It's in and it works. And, okay. and I'm just a little worse for the wear. That's hey, all. Hey, Gene, let's <laughs> hire someone next time to install the <laughs> Don't door. Don't worry about it, You hun. and I can <laughs> work together. <laughs> We're okay. That was the, you're okay. Yeah. I'm okay. We're all good. And you're going to be okay. If you feel overwhelmed by the amount of evil in the world today, you are not alone. As we grow closer and closer to Jesus' return, many of us desire to know what God's plan is for these turbulent times and how our role is significant. Our guest Randy Kay once had a near-death experience where he had a personal encounter with Jesus. Wow, in Randy's new book, Heaven Stormed, he goes into more detail about what he saw and the crucial revelations that he received in regards to the end times. Randy, it is great to have you with us on Hope Today. Great to be with you, Amy and Tom. Thank you for having me. We really are on the edge of our seats as you really have experienced heaven, Jesus, and uh, in our previous interview years ago about your experience in heaven, there were some things you did not reveal, but you have revealed them in this book. Let's get started with all of the life reviews that you start this book with. Why did you do that? Well, that's a good question because I didn't know how to start the book. Uh, I was released to share about the storm. I was told explicitly by Jesus as I was sojourning with him in heaven that I could not talk about the storm. And that's why I did not. Uh, but as I was, as I was typing away, I was asking the Lord, how do I begin this uh, journey? And the Lord spoke into my heart that uh, he wanted me to share my life reviews because those are little understood, but are a common experience for those who 
have an afterlife uh, experience. And what those were, uh, were not, it wasn't like a, a movie reel, you know, of uh, home movies, you know, which you quickly go through. I was actually in the place in each of the vignettes that I was seeing in heaven of my life in review. So I was seeing at the early stages of my childhood, for example, and then I was seeing as I was growing up and I had a very difficult childhood and I was asking Jesus during the course of these times why I was experiencing some of these things. I was in and out of the hospital uh, and as a child growing up, I had some challenges there. And then there were uh, times when I became uh, evolved, if you will, into an agnostic. And I was a very, what I call militant agnostic. And so Jesus was taking me on this journey. And I was in what was called, what I call the theater of life. I was actually in the place where I was having these life reviews. I was in the place, for example, of a hospital when I was at an orderly in, in high school. Uh, and I was serving a meal to a, a boy who was uh, very sickly, uh, skin and bones. And uh, he said to me in this theater of life, would you, um, I'm going to go to heaven. Uh, and I said, he was dying of cancer. And I said, well, that's very good. As an agnostic, I was, I told him I didn't really believe in those things. But if there is a heaven, I'm sure you'll be there. And I was seeing this child, this boy, saying this to me as I was there in heaven. And he said this, he said, someday you will be in heaven also. And when he said that, I was there in heaven looking at this in a, in a, as a spectator in that room at that very time. Okay, so you had a life-altering near-death experience where you met Jesus. Can you quickly recap before we move into the storms and the details of the book and the end times? Can you give us a glimpse of that experience that you had with Jesus? Oh, my. Um, I oftentimes say, Amy, that you could have thrown me into a trash bin and I would have been perfectly content if it was with Jesus face to face. I was uh, I died. I clinically died as recorded in the hospital. Uh, I was being pulled by a light. Uh, and then I was in this place that was uh, where. I came to learn there were warring figures, angels and demons. Uh, and I don't know why exactly I was there, except for the fact that I was coming into this place at a point of consternation. I was having a, what is commonly referred to as a crisis of faith. And then I cried out the name of Jesus. And I was cheek to cheek with the Lord Jesus. And I was just like a, a sobbing uh, baby, uh, just caving in. He lifted me up and turned me face to face with him. And I looked into the eyes of love. And that was my first thought was, so this is love. So this is love. And then he turned uh, and he spoke into my right ear and he said, uh, trust me. And those words have uh, lingered on uh, since my return and carried me through in my lifetime. Trust me. And then we went through a journey uh, into uh, a paradise, for, uh, the consummate paradise. And I was seeing these vignettes. I was seeing people in heaven. I was seeing all of the things that the Lord wanted me to see because I was seeing through, as I term it, seeing through the eyes of Jesus. So everything I saw was through the vantage point of what the Lord Jesus wanted me to see. Uh, and nothing was happenstance. Everything was intentional. Uh, and I was seeing all kinds of, uh, all kinds of things that were going on. I was seeing uh, a painter who was painting. And, and I was seeing people that were doing things in a way that was beyond, I knew implicitly from what the Holy Spirit was conveying to me, beyond their capacity. Because everything they were doing that I was seeing was, was brought to the fullness in heaven. So you saw, I saw master artists that were probably painting something akin to stick figures on earth. I was seeing uh, a formerly homeless man 
man who was feeding people uh, with, uh, and Jesus said, those who uh, are served on this earth uh, will be uh, those who serve others. That is, will be served even greater in heaven. And so, this homeless man who had been served by others was serving others in heaven. So I was seeing all of these things, and then Jesus said that He was going to take me to the throne room, and that I would be introduced to the storm. So after this wonderful place with. Oh, with thousands upon thousands of angels and the beauty of it all, Jesus said that things would change for me and he would be bringing me to the throne room where I would meet the father because I was sojourning with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, who was a person, by the way, in heaven. But now I was about to meet the father. Okay, great pause right there because <laughs> the very title of this book is Heaven Stormed. You could not write about this storm in your previous book, but all of a sudden, right now, you have been released. You feel released to have written about this storm. Can you describe the storm to us right now that you saw? Yes. Well, you began with uh, the life reviews, and, and the question oftentimes is why? Well, Jesus was actually showing how he redeemed my life throughout my life uh, through those vignettes that I was seeing. But now I was before the throne room of God, and I was seeing these special angels, I'll call them. These were other uh, looking angels that were gallantly adorned and gold in their appearance. And I was seeing the more or less crystalline cathedral-like seat by which, uh, on which the father was sitting. And I was seeing the, uh, uh, these deep blue cobalt blue stones around the throne. And there were uh, individuals walking through those stones through a fire through a fire, a pillar of fire like that which uh, Moses experienced with the Jewish people and during the Exodus and the burning bush. The pillar of fire, the Holy Spirit explained to me, was the presence of the Holy Spirit in its fullness. But then there was this figure that was atop this uh, throne, and he would, did not appear uh, at all human-like as did Jesus. He had long flowing white hair. And I could not see his face entirely because the brightness, the brilliancy of his face was so strong. I, I call it the, uh, the brilliance of what would be a thousand suns. And uh, he was uh, declaring words as prayers were being ushered before the throne room of God, Father God. And I saw then, as Jesus was with me all this time, I saw Jesus at the throne room with Father God as he spoke these words. He said, let it begin. And then I saw a sequence of events. And then as he said these things, I saw the glory of God, which was like an orb that was filling the earth, that was, that was spreading throughout the earth. And as the glory of God was pouring down upon the earth, I saw miracles upon the earth as Jesus was showing me what was happening. I saw people walking out of hospitals. I saw people praising the Lord and being healed. I saw people who were performing all kinds of miracles. And that was the first appearance of what, what is commonly termed the end times is what I, what I was seeing. And then Jesus took the book of life from the throne room, and he reached out his arms to me as though he was going to give me the book of life. And I said, no, no, Lord, I cannot hold the book of life. I'm not worthy. But then the Holy Spirit reached through my uh, arm and into my hands, 
my hands were somewhat translucent in my spirit body, but then they were opaque in appearance. And I understood the Holy Spirit was reaching in to allow me to carry the book of life. And Jesus rested it upon my hands. And I knew for the first time that the word of God was not just a book, but it was the very presence of God Almighty that I was holding in my hands. And then I went, once I fully understood that the presence of God was the word of God, Jesus took the word of God from me. And then the presence, the word of God, the Father Almighty, in concert with Jesus, spoke forth the next advent of what he said. And he said, let it begin. But it is time then for the close. And then I saw the tribulation period. Jesus reached his hand over my eyes this time as though to protect me because what I saw during this time was beyond uh, comprehension. It was it was abhorrent in, 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 in its appearance, and yet I knew that God was in control. I knew that the accumulation of sins for, for generations over thousands of years had come to uh, bear out during the tribulation. And it was so abhorrent to me. I'd lost my peace for the first time in heaven that I asked the Lord to stop showing me these things. And then he did. He removed my, his hand from my face. And uh, then I saw the next advent as, the, as, as, as Jesus and Father God from the throne spoke forth what would come next. I had seen people coming for, forward uh, from earth to heaven being, being ushered forth through these what I call portals uh, from a glassy floor in, uh, in heaven and the throne room. And then I saw... Jesus, <laughs> this is going to sound just blow your mind because it blew mine. Jesus was, Jesus was mounting a white horse and around him were these angels who were blowing trumpets and, and uh, the tassels of this white horse upon which Jesus was sitting were dipped in this red, crimson red, which I understood from the Holy Spirit who was speaking uh, into me what was going on, that this was, uh, these tassels were dipped in the blood of Jesus Christ from the cross. And then as he was mounting his horse, I saw this place below, which was triangular in shape with a, a at its tip was this burning kind of fire flame. It looked like a torch. And I came to understand later on that this was Israel. And then Jesus, after mounting his horse with the horde of angels around him, came down, descended upon the earth and, uh, this was beyond words. And, and what happened was that there was a, a, a battle, but Jesus had declared, God had declared the word and Jesus had won the battle in, a, in an incredible fashion. And then the final phase of what I was seeing in these end times after, after the consummation of this battle in which uh, Jesus had gained the victory, I was in a place that was a paradise and that was entirely different. And I was standing on this ground now and I was seeing the, this lavish feast that was set and, and Jesus was there and father God was there, but in more, more like a, in a human like form, still gallant in appearance with white flowing hair, but they stood there and Jesus stood at the head of the table and tables and tables and tables that were set forth with a feast beyond anything that I had ever seen in, uh, in any banquet on earth. And, um, and I was seeing the, 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 what would be, uh, called in the Bible as the wedding feast. And I saw the temple to my right, uh, that had descended from heaven and as I was standing, them with, uh, standing there with uh, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and Father God, 
And I was on what I knew at that point was uh, what the Bible references as, as the new earth. And those, that was the unfolding of the end time events that I beheld during the storm. But I've got to say, I'll, I'll finish with this, Amy, and that is that the storm as it was beginning was when all of heaven went silent and the joy of, of heaven then became stilled. And at, at the advent, at the beginning of this, the, um, there was a rolling dirge, kind of a, a funeral song, if you will. When all of heaven before the storm went silent, and I realized that this was the morning cry of God for the lost. I heard in heaven the morning cry of God for the lost. And that's just what I'll leave it with, that God is mourning for the lost right now, that all who would be saved would be saved. And that was the advent, the beginning of the storm. Wow, uh, Randy, I mean, I don't know how you stay grounded in the present with all that you've seen. And what do you want someone who's watching today, someone who's uh, reading your book, someone who's hearing about this, what do you want them to really grasp more than anything uh, that, that God has shown you? What, what are you hoping to see people take hold of? Well, I think there's relevance to the timing of how, and I, I write about this in the book, as to how God informed me that I was to share about the storm. Because to your point, Tom, it is, it is, uh, it is beyond words, almost, and it really is. But I believe that, and praying and praying with why the Lord's timing is now, is that the time is short. And the storm is, we're at the beginning cusp of the storm. The storm is about to begin. And so I, I would just convey that God's love is so incredible for us that he would do all that he could possibly do to save those who are lost, but also to call, call awareness to the church, the body of Christ, that it's time for us to, to step up. And because the storm is is coming. You went through a storm there, as I understand, at Pittsburgh recently, because the storm is coming, that it's time for us to, to disciple, to evangelize, and to uh, steep ourselves in the Word of God, and to, to get serious, for lack of a better way of putting it, with God, because there's little time left. Randy, you are so right on that there is an urgency for the lost to be found today. We just have a few minutes. Can you take a minute and can you pray for the lost ones that need to be found? And can you also pray for an urgency and a clarity in the body of Christ? Deb, thank you, yes. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above all names, Yeshua, Yahweh, we pray, Lord God, that you would open the eyes of those who do not know you, that you would create within them a burning desire to know the truth so that you can set them free, as your word says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Just, just, just stave away all complacency in the name of Jesus Christ. Complacency for those who do not know you, that they would know you and be drawn by your Holy Spirit to be open to you. And also that you would create that sense of urgency in the church, that it is time to disciple, time to evangelize, time to talk to that neighbor, time to go to that place in the grocery store to pray for people as the Holy Spirit leads, to do those things in the moments of life and not wait for an opportunity, but to, to create those opportunities that you have laid before us. Lord God, create within us, in us a fire a fire yes. to do your will yes. in every moment 
of the life that we have left. Yes. For even though some may not see the end of times, all of us are living in our, our own end times. And Lord God, now gift us, create within us the, the giftings, the power through your Holy Spirit to do your will in all cases and at all times. In Jesus Christ's precious name. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you so much, Randy, for sharing very vulnerably and, and f frankly and, and boldly your heavenly encounter. We thank you so much for your ministry. Thank you for really shaking up the church today. Well, thank you, Amy and Tom. I, I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, this is, this is not in my character, by the way. I want to let you know. <laughs> I, I used to be a CEO of a biotech company and all of that. So this is kind of aside from what I normally would do, but I, it has to be said. And I know that uh, we are living in those times, which are very serious, but also ones that are very exciting. Yes. Thank yes. you so much for this awesome book. We bless you and your ministry and the future books that you have. Thank wow. you. Yeah. Wow, Tom. I mean, wow. That I mean, is the, the mournful heart of God, God for the lost. Yes. Can you imagine if you don't Stillness. know Jesus Christ or if you do, think of how God feels about all the people around that don't know him, all the people that are far from him, all the people that are, are not coming to that place and not coming to that marriage supper of the lamb and he died for them. That's how much he cares for us and that's how much he cares for them. And when they're away from him, it's like an estranged child. There's no, no uh, mystery that he used the prodigal son as an example, as a parable of this. We need to have our heart bothered by the things that concern the heart of God. We need to have those things in our heart as well. Have the heart of God today. Yes, and this is a great time to stop playing games. Just quit playing games, world, God, world, God. Just stop it. Let's get, let's sense the urgency and the clarity to give ourselves fully, just fully surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He loves you passionately. He cares for you deeply. He has an incredible plan for your life and you can be in the ark of safety in these end times if your heart is in him. So today we bless you and we bless your family in Jesus name.